Welcome to the final part of the Iron Bat Chair. Yes, this is the final part. It's been a long time in the making. And if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, you know, feel free to check them out. <coughs> and while you're there, you know, if you can hit that subscribe button, that would really help me out. And also hit that notification bell. So then you can see when I put out some new content. And speaking of the new content, uh, you know, there is new content coming. I've recorded a lot of videos already. They're just not edited yet. So they will be coming out in the new year. So if you can help me out by subscribing, you know, my next goal is to get to 300. So if you can help me get there, that would be much appreciated. <clears throat> so let's check out where we're at right now in the process of building this chair. So we're building a spring edge and right now I'm attaching the spring wire to the coil springs which are attached with thread so you really need to tie them in and make sure they're really secure because there's going to be a lot of movement in the spring edge when somebody sits on it so they really need to be attached really well and you also have to make sure that the wire is level with the base of the chair so that's very important to measure all of that and you will see that I'm doing that right now so I'm securing the, the wire at the correct height using uh, buttoning twine it's called so it's very thick and it will last a very long time So the next step now is we are, I'm just using some scrap two inch foam just to fill in around the back before I put my hessian in. So then you don't have to use so much fiber or whatever you're using in the seat, it just fills in that gap after the springs. The springs will be, you know, finish off this height and then there's a void after the spring where the hessian goes down where you staple off. So this the the foam is just there just to fill in that gap, gives a nice roundness, and it, it's only because I've got the scrap there that I that I do that. If you don't have scrap you don't have to use it. So, so now right now we are I'm tying the springs to the hessian so it secures it a little bit more. The front edge really needs to be tied in because there's a lot, as again, there's a lot of movement. The hessian needs to be secure. So that's what I'm doing right now using a very small curved needle just to thread in and tie itself off and it's a running stitch. So again, we need to measure to make sure the spring edge wire is very level. So make sure you temper that off and then finish it off like I'm doing right now, nice and neat. And now we're just doing the outside, finishing that off. And the next step will be putting in the coconut fiber. So now, yes, we're doing the coconut fiber. <laughs> so, coconut fiber needs to be teased up. Usually it's very clumpy, so you need to really break it up and you know, lay it in nice and flat. And build, the coconut fiber stage is where you build the shape 
of your seat that you want it to be finished so and it, the whole point of it is to put a layer of hardness over the spring so when you sit on it you can't feel the springs and it's also used to create my edge roll which will be seen a bit later so again I'm going to while I'm doing this it takes a little while to tease it all and do everything yeah a reminder can you subscribe I'm trying to hit 300 so if you can help me out that'd be great remember to hit that notification bell so, uh, to be notified of when more videos come out which I said previously there will be more coming out so stay tuned for that alright so still finishing off the coconut fibre right now so but it's starting to take shape don't think there's going to be much more I'm putting in. The next step is to cut another piece of hessian to go over the top. And so there I'm cutting the hessian, just measuring how wide I need to do it. The easiest way to cut hessian is a good trick is to grab one little thread and just pull it and pull it through and that will give you a nice straight line that you can cut your hessian so it's nice and straight just a little tip that helps you visually helps you visually to keep everything square and it's just something that I do just to uh, keep myself uh, keep it easier to keep things nice and level so now what I'm doing is with a long mattress needle stabbing through the hessian with a thread and making a running stitch to hold all the coconut fiber in the seat area so it doesn't move around too much and that's what those stitches do it's a running stitch and you stitch it through and then tie it off and pull it back and make sure it's compressed and then <clears throat> then what I'm doing now is just uh, re putting more filling in the edge to create my roll it's on the first through you, you never really get enough fibre in there so once you've done that front edge you can flick it back fill in more create your edge roll which is what I'm doing now I'm using a regulator needle to make sure it's all level and if you spend a lot of time on this stage to make sure it's perfect it'll make your stitching job a lot neater which is what I'm doing right now is I'm doing what is called a blind stitch and the blind stitch does two things it connects the hessian to the spring wire and sort of like the wires here and the hessian goes over it and then the needle comes under and through and then back through again and it pulls compresses all the fiber to the front of the edge roll so when you create your edge roll there's a lot more condensed fiber on that edge so you get a nice hard round roll and that's what you're trying to create with a spring edge roll now any roll uh, any traditional type roll that you're trying to create you're trying to create a nice level even roll so it's, it's a lot of work to master I've been doing it for around about 10 years now so I've got pretty down pat uh, 
So you can see I just go straight through. There's no middling, fiddling around with my regulator too much because I've already done all the work beforehand. So now that we're pretty much done our edge roll, now we're going to do the next stage, which is the top. Uh, I'm doing this traditional slash modern so there's not going to be any flock on it it's just going to the shapes already there with the seat and the build up with my flop um, my fiber sorry so obviously just finishing off the back right now making sure that's all neat and tidy and secure and <coughs> Cutting out some two inch foam to put over the seat. And I didn't have a big enough piece so I had to join it. And in this case, joining is no problem. The join will be right at the back, so it's not gonna affect the seat too much. When I do my foam joins though, I do put calico over the join so the foam won't come apart We're less likely to come apart because I've put a piece of calico over the top of the foam to really secure it so when it gets sat on and it compresses and moves the joints aren't going to split apart so that's just something that I do to preserve the longevity of the chair so if you want to do that go ahead and do it I think it's a really good move it's it's a good way to also get rid of scrap calico that you have lying around. So, so here, this part here, now I'm building the front edge and I'm using some scrap one inch foam to just fill where the roll comes out. There's a void where you've stitched. There's always a void there. It needs to be filled by something. So that's what that one inch is doing right now. And then our final layer of the one inch over the top to finish off the front edge. <coughs> So that's what we're putting on right now and now just trimming off the foam because it's a bit wide and it looked really weird if the edge was out one inch compared to the outside back so I've shaved it so it will finish level and it sort of comes out and around and you know finishes nicely now we're just putting on 200 gram Dacron over the foam, which protects the foam from the fabric with all the sitting on and the rubbing and the movement. You know, you need to put Dacron on to protect the foam. So here's the concept that we came up with using this piece here with the flamingo and the cage as sort of the hero and then I've basically picked colours off of this. So we've got you know, pinks and pinks and reds and yellows, a bit of neutral tones for this, some browns and some neutrals all the way around here. And a little piece of blue which matches this over here so it's not too overpowering i don't think so now i just gotta sew this together and make this shape here so first thing i'm going to do is sew this 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 and that and then once that's done then i can start patching this together make the shape and almost be ready to put it on so let's keep going all right so now that i've sewn that all up now we're just tempering it on first to make sure it fits and you know if you do your planning and measure a lot most times you can do it first time so 
just it's just trial and error really uh, in this case it fit on perfectly you know you've got that tr that margin of error with the foam that you can compress a little bit to give you whatever look you're after so using foam really does help a lot so the finished seat is done and now we've got to do the top roll which was very complicated to sew it wasn't very complicated to sew up it was very complicated to attach i had to hand sew it all because it's an iron frame there's nowhere to staple it so it all had to be hand stitched with thread so it's a long and complicated process of making sure that you don't pull it too much, create creases, so it needs to be temporary in place with pins. And yeah, it's a long, long process to do a invisible stitch as well. So you, you don't know, it looks like you've uh, machine sewed it, but you've actually just used a thread and needle. So yeah, it's a very long process. Once again, I'm going to say, can you please subscribe? If you're not a subscriber and you've got this far in my video, thank you very much for still watching. And I hope I'm giving you a lot of useful information. So, you know, if I am, you know, and you have any questions, put a comment in and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll answer it because I don't get a lot of comments. <laughs> uh, if you could uh, do that, it'd be really, really good. So now I've finished hand stitching the front. Now I'm just putting some daffron over the over the thing, and now I'm gonna pull it around. And again, I need to hand stitch the back. The back doesn't have to be as pretty because it's going to get covered by the outside back so I can just really pull it around and do only a few stitches to hold it in place but the really complicated part is those top corners because you've got all the fabric gathering in that corner and you need to fold it and crease it and pull it and you can see I spent a lot of time on that corner just to get it really perfect. Here is the finished chair. Uh, finally done. Now this chair took me about 18 hours to complete and I reckon six hours of it was six hours definitely was just working out where the pattern was going and and sewing it up. So in the end I think it looks pretty good and I'm quite happy with it as my first patchwork chair as such to do. So let's just uh, flip it around and see the back. This is all hand stitched. All hand stitched. And that's it. So that's the patchwork chair finally finished. And as I've said in a previous video, my next job that I will be doing is those TV chairs right over there which I showed in the previous in a previous video so I'll get a start on them today so keep a look out for those because that one's going to be 
a sewing video, so all about cutting and sewing. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, give us a like and you know share my video with other people who might be interested in seeing that sort of stuff. So thanks very much. I'll see you next time.